next uh, light item on the uh, programme this afternoon is uh, our last speaker today, Terry Donovan. Um, I picked up Terry from the airport yesterday and I probably saw him continuously for about 14 hours as we went to bed in the early hours this morning. I felt I know him very well and uh, he's a delightful person to uh, have as company and uh, his reputation goes before him to this meeting as being an excellent speaker. Uh, I'll just read out part of his um, extensive uh, biography here. Uh, but he received his DDS, University of Alberta, in 1967, so he's Canadian. Uh, and he practiced full-time in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan, for 13 years, and received a certificate in advanced prosthodontics from the University of Southern California in 1981. He was formerly professor and director of advanced education and prosthodontics program at USC, and was chair of the Department of Restorative Dentistry there for many years. He was also the Associate Dean for General Practice and Executive Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, and he's currently Professor and Section Head for Biomaterials, Department of Operative Dentistry, University of North Carolina School of Dentistry, Chapel Hill. Uh, he's published extensively, and he's on just about all committees and uh, uh, societies you can think of. And we're very pleased to have him here this afternoon uh, to address the subject, which is very close to our hearts, which is an evaluation of contemporary ceramic systems. Terry, the floor's yours. Well, thanks very much, Ken. It's uh, indeed uh, both a pleasure and an honor to speak toward to this society. Uh, we had a great time yesterday, solved all the problems of the world last night, but I forgot what we decided. Uh, but we're going to talk about uh, ceramic systems today. And I don't know what the situation here in Great Britain is, but I can tell you in America, uh, dentists are very confused about what ceramic systems we have. Uh, they don't understand what, what they have. They're being... Uh, urged by dental labs, by manufacturers to use products that have no, uh, and, and no real clinical trials and no clinical evidence. And so I'm going to try to sort out for you what I think we have in the world today. We've got tremendous numbers of uh, different products out there. Uh, many of these things have, have absolutely no clinical evidence behind them. And uh, like I said a minute ago, most dentists seem to be quite confused. Now, the two major players in America right now are these two. Um, every time I see these lips, I get dizzy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but these two products, uh, uh, IPS Emax from Ivoclar and uh, Bruxier from uh, Glidewell Lab, and it's a form of monolithic zirconia, uh, or uh, uh, other labs call them full contour zirconia. And I'll sort out where I think these things fit for us, but they're there's a, just a tremendous amount of marketing uh, on these two products. Now, everything has to be done kind of in a context, in my opinion, and, and I think dentists need a philosophy that guides them in their treatment decisions. I was so lucky in 1967 when I graduated from dental school, the very first speaker I, I saw in continuing education is about two weeks after I graduated was the late Bob Barkley. And I'm, I'm sure most of you are way too young to have ever been exposed to Bob Barkley, but he was a phenomenal speaker. He was like an evangelist, and he talked about prevention. He was talking about the medical model of dental caries in 1967. And I was so pleased to hear the comments about risk assessment today. In North America, they make risk assessment so bloody complicated, no one does it. And it's a relatively simple thing. They're either at high risk or, or, or they're not. And I think you can move on. And, and, but Bob Barkley was...